good morning everyone uh, today's presentation is by alice and uh, prashant alice is uh, jr uh, third year jr of our department very sincere and hard working girl and you will listen when you will listen you will realize that how much in depth he goes she goes to every subject every topic and every patient's problem uh, it is it will be moderated by prashant Prashant was again our was once upon a time our he was our resident and now he is our faculty of the department and uh, Prashant is again a very hard working boy and whatever we say uh, in the department if there is any important work and if we hand over to Prashant and it is going to be get over definitely within time within the time limit and uh, I really want to acknowledge the contribution which he has given in the COVID services. Uh, because uh, this was that was the very hard time, and he 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 is one of the one amongst the uh, our other faculty members, those who have worked hard to streamline the COVID services and saved many lives. Uh, so we will listen about in depth uh, codeine and tramadol from uh, Alice and Prashant. So please start Prashant and Alice, uh, and uh, thank you everyone for joining in early morning. Prashant and Alice, you can start and you can start sharing the slides. Uh, good morning, uh, respected uh, seniors and my dear friends. Uh, today we are discussing about two very important drugs. Uh, we try to cover as many as possible important points uh, regarding these drugs. And uh, please write any query or suggestion in the chat box. We will uh, answer them at the end of the seminar. Over to Alice. Uh, Bam, good morning uh, to one dot present here. Uh, uh, I take this opportunity to uh, extend my gratitude to our uh, HOD and our mentor, uh, Dr. Sushma Ma'am and uh, Dr. Prashant sir, who has, been, uh, who has been guiding me throughout this lecture. So without much delay, we'll be starting. Uh, first, we'll be starting with uh, one of the drug which has been in their highlight uh, in our uh, country for the past few years, that is uh, Tremadol. So uh, first we'll be dealing uh, with introduction, then we'll be going through general pharmacology, uh, the dosing regimen, uh, the drug interaction, indications, adverse effects, the toxicity, and finally a little bit about dependence and abuse. So uh, we all know that tramadol is a centrally acting analgesic with a multimodal fraction. It was discovered and synthesized in 1962 by uh, Grunenthal GBMH, which is a German company. And it was tested almost 15 years in the German market, and it was only in 1977 it was introduced in the foreign market. Uh, in 2014, it, uh, it had a land uh, break uh, event, uh, which was it was detected in roots and barks of an African medicinal plant, uh, Nauclea latifolia, which you can see uh, on the slide. So uh, here we have the evidence uh, which supports the same. Here we can see this particular analgesic tramadol was isolated from the root and bark of uh, no, uh, nuclear latifolia, although it, it was in trace amount and the biosynthetic precursors can be traced back to important amino acids like L-lysine uh, and L-arginine. And coming on to the most important part, which is the general pharmacology. So here we'll be dealing uh, with uh, properties, uh, the pharmacokinetics, which we'll be dealing under absorption, distribution, uh, metabolism, elimination. Uh, then pharmacogenomics and uh, then into the pharmacodynamics. So coming on to the chemical properties, uh, chemically speaking, tramadol is 4-phenyl piperidin analog of codeine. So from the name itself, you can find out that it has a, a connection with the codeine. It is a codeine analog and it is present in the racemic mixture of 50-50% containing dextro and liver enantiomers and both of these enantiomers contribute to this analgesia by both opioid as well as non-opioid mechanism. And uh, it undergo first pass metabolism. And the first hepatic metabolite is called as O dismethyl tramadol or M1. It acts as a weak mu opioid receptor agonist. So, also, I have used the word uh, weak. Uh, it is much stronger than the parent compound, as high as by 400 times. And uh, the molecular modeling uh, shows the metabolite M1 and amorphin binds with a similar residue on, uh, on mu opioid receptor. So on the right hand of side, uh, we can see the molecular alignment of both of uh, these compounds. So coming on to the uh, pharmacokinetics uh, exact, uh, which is absorption and distribution. Uh, so after an oral intake, almost 90% of the drug is uh, completely absorbed. And uh, the bioavailability after single use is 70%. 
And as I've told earlier, it undergoes first pass metabolism, which gets saturated after multiple usage. So the bioavailability can be as high as 100%. And it, it achieves peak plasma concentration within one to two hours oral, or, of oral intake and 45 minutes of intramuscular and 30 minutes of intravenous administration. And pharmacokinetics of oral and intravenous tramadol do not differ significantly between adults and children. And uh, coming over to the volume of distribution, uh, following a 100 milligram uh, intravenous dose, uh, volume of distribution is around uh, 2.6 to 2.9 liter per kilogram, and the plasma binding capacity is around 20 percent. So uh, it is never complete uh, without we discuss uh, without a discussion on the two types of preparation of tramadol, which is the immediate release and extended release. As the name implies, immediate release immediately releases uh, the active compound uh, to reach a peak plasma concentration within two hours. And extended release achieves the same in four to eight hours. Uh, the elimination T half of immediate release uh, is around six hours, but uh, extended release achieves the same by 16 hours. Uh, so uh, because of the same reason, uh, immediate release have to be given multiple times in a day, like uh, for every four to six hours, while extended release have to be given in every 12 to 24 hours. So coming on to the utility of the immediate release, uh, immediate release is mainly given in severe acute pain because the peak plasma concentration will be reached in around two hours in that case. But in extended release, uh, it can be given for moderate to severe uh, chronic pain mainly. So uh, what are the disadvantages of each? So immediate release has to be taken multiple times in a day so as to achieve analgesia. Uh, so it is associated with fluctuating plasma concentration. That is, it has uh, pl plasma peaks and troughs. So peaks are associated with higher plasma levels. So there are higher risk of adverse uh, effects at these conditions. And um, in extended release, uh, they can accumulate in renal failure. So uh, what happens? It will be remaining in the blood for longer periods of time. Uh, so the, uh, especially in case of creatinine coherence, uh, less than 30 ml per minute. Uh, and uh, extended release should not be split or it should not be crushed because it can lead to speedy uh, absorption, which can be really fatal. And uh, further coming on to the pharmacokinetics, uh, which is metabolism. Uh, so uh, tramadol uh, undergoes uh, first phase one and phase two. Uh, phase one um, metabolism includes demethylation. And as we can see from this picture, uh, the phase one me uh, metabolism uh, with the help of CYP2D6, which, is, uh, which belongs to a cytochrome P450 superfamily, yields this M1 or O uh, desmethyl tramadol. This is a, a metabolite which is a, a have higher mu opioid receptor activity. And uh, with the help of uh, via CYP3A4 and CYP2B6, it yields as N de uh, desmethyl tramadol or M2. And around 23 metabolites have been found uh, like this uh, from tramadol. And uh, coming on to the last part of pharmacokinetics, that is uh, elimination. Uh, the tramadol metabolites uh, is mainly polar in nature. So it is mainly removed through urine around 90%. And out of this 90%, 60% are in the form of metabolites and 30% are unchanged. And around only 10% are removed through phases. And uh, the elimination T half of resin of tramadol is around six hours. And uh, for the M1, which is active metabolite, is around eight hours. So from this, we can see that uh, the elimination T half uh, is bound to changes if there is a decreased uh, renal or a liver function. Now, uh, so uh, many of us uh, have seen in our clinical practice that uh, with the same dose of tramadol, uh, some patients get sedated, some patients have adequate pain relief, some patients have inadequate pain relief. So the answer lies in the genetic polymorphism of uh, the CYP2D6 enzyme. So we have few slides on it. And same genetic polymorphism of CYP2D6 apply for codeine also as uh, it is also metabolized by CYP2D6 for its mu agonistic action. So, let's continue. Yes, sir. Uh, so, as, as I have already said, uh, we know the cytochrome P2D6. It, is a, it belongs to superfamily of cytochrome P450 enzyme. And uh, these enzymes are associated with the metabolism of a wide range of drugs that we use, like antipsychotics, antidepressants, analysis, etc. And an important feature of cytochrome P2D6 is its genetic polymorphism. That is, uh, it, the enzyme activity varies from person to person. Uh, so, uh, if we have to, uh, the phenotype of a person, uh, to be termed as an ultra rapid metabolizer or a normal or a poor metabolizer depends upon the number of functioning allele that a person uh, possesses. So, if the person is having uh, two normal functioning alleles, 
uh, there will be normal metabolism activity. So uh, then if in case of normal metabolism, uh, metabolism they will be uh, yielding as metabolites, uh, in this case M1, of a particular amount which we expect. Uh, but if the patient is having more than two normal functioning allele, so uh, the enzyme activity will be much more than we expect. So in that case, uh, the concentration of M1, which is the metabolite, will be much more. So higher concentration is also associated with higher risk of adverse events and uh, toxicity. Similarly, if the patient, uh, if a person is uh, having no functioning allele, so in that case, there will be no enzyme reactivity or very less enzyme reactivity. So the concentration of M1 will be very less. So the person will not have any analgesia if we give uh, them tramadol. Uh, so this is how we, uh, this is what we can explain different people with the same drug having different action. So, uh, so this is a, a trial which is uh, which was tested uh, to find out the effects of a CYP2D6 guided uh, opioid prescription on pain control. So they have divided the patients into two arms, one arm getting CYP2D6 guided and the other one getting a usual care. So let's see how they have done this. Firstly, with the help of, uh, of a buckle slab, they genotype it. And from the genotype, that is uh, based upon the number of functioning allele, they divided the people into a uh, poor ultra and um, normal metabolizer. And they also found uh, any concomitant drugs, that is other drugs which use the cytochrome B450 enzymes. And then they referred the patient to a physician. Uh, this particular physician gave them the cytochrome P2D6 guided recommendation. And what they have found? They found that uh, the change in pain int intensity had a great uh, significant reduction at baseline as well as three months. And uh, there was in fact a 30% reduction in pain intensity among those who received CYP2 disease guided therapy. So uh, here we have some recommendations under clinical pharmacogenetics uh, implementation consortium and Dutch pharmacogenetic uh, working group. Uh, in this, you can see if the uh, particular person is an ultra rapid metabolizer, that means more than two normal functioning alleles, it's better to avoid because they have high potential uh, toxicity. And if at all an opioid use is warranted, we should be considering other opioids and uh, like a non a non codeine and non uh, tramadol uh, opioids and if uh, alternate is uh, not possible then we should be using around 40 percent of the dose and we should be watching for this effects in case of both normal metabolizer and intermediate metabolizer uh, we can use uh, the label recommended age or weight specific dosing but in case of intermediate metabolizer if we are not achieving the particular analgesia we can try a dose increase uh, but still uh, we can also consider any uh, known tramadol or non codeine alternative and in case of poor metabolizer they, we don't, they don't have any functioning allele so uh, it is expected to, for them to have uh, a diminishing or an uh, non analgesia uh, not to achieve any analgesia so uh, if the opioid use is warranted we should be thinking of other opioids like morphine uh, fentanyl etc so uh, what is the implication in our clinical setup? So from this, we can see the frequency of cytochrome P2D6 in Indian as well as in uh, international population. So the first uh, graph shows the frequency of the uh, poor metabolizers around the worldwide. We can see the Caucasians and the Europeans have the higher percentage. And the ultra metabolizers are mainly found uh, around, around, among the Ethiopians. And coming on to the intermediate metabolizers, although it is highly seen in the Southeast Asian regions, we can also see uh, a good percentage among in Andhra Pradesh, uh, Gujarat and Punjab. So uh, in particular in Indian population, we can see uh, the normal metabolizers constitute around 80% and it is uh, not worthy to uh, note that uh, the poor metabolizers are not de uh, detected in Indian population. So uh, that brings us uh, to the end of the pharmacogenomics. Now we'll be starting the pharmacodynamics. And uh, pharmacodynamics, as you know, it is uh, it explains what the drug is doing to the body. And we'll be revisiting here the old and new molecular target. So this is what we have known till now. And analysis mechanism of tramadol includes both the opioid as well as a non-opioid component. And the racemic mixture, which contain the dextro and liver enantiomers, have their own uh, actions. Uh, the dextro enantiomer uh, prevents re serotonin reuptake, while a liver enantiomers um, inhibit the norepinephrine reuptake. And the affinity of the uh, racemic mixture uh, to the um, opioid receptor is around 4,000 fold less than that of morphine. And after the major metabolite, that is M1, it is also present in both uh, dextro and levo uh, forms. And in fact, the affinity of the dextro enantiomer to be specific to the opioid, opioid receptor is 110 that of uh, morphine. So in this picture, we can see uh, the affinity constant Ki uh, to the different uh, uh, 
uh, tramadol and M1. And uh, here, uh, lower the Ki, uh, that is lower the affinity constant, higher will be the affinity. Uh, so here in morphine, we can see it is very less. So it, it is having the highest affinity. And comparing the uh, M1, that is a dextro uh, enantiomer of uh, meta M1 metabolite and the racemic, we can also first further see that uh, M1 has a much lesser uh, affinity constant. Also uh, looking here, we have the uptake reinhibition, uh, that is Ki constant of uh, levo in noradrenaline and uh, serotonin in dextro, which is the least among the two. So uh, what are the points uh, which are in support of the known opioid mechanism? So naloxone, which is an opioid antagonist, could uh, only partially antagonize the tramadol induced analgesia by 30%. And in fact, cunidin, uh, which is an inhibitor of the hepatic demethylation of tramadol into M1, uh, inhibit tramadol induced meiosis, but it, uh, it could not completely uh, reverse it. Uh, so there have been various studies which uh, demonstrate the antidepressant action of tramadol, which is very similar to the antidepressants which we use. Uh, that is SSRA and SNRA, which could possibly explain the uh, uh, non-opioid mechanism. Also, uh, Yohimbin, which is an alpha-2 adrenergic antagonist, it could significantly reduce the analgesic effect of tramadol. So uh, this gives an idea uh, that they also have a mechanism to this. So uh, here we can see uh, the the pictorial representation of uh, mechanism of action of tramadol. So uh, this is a mu opioid receptor. Tramadol will uh, have a mu opioid receptor agonistic activity. So it will prevent uh, neurotransmitter release uh, in the presynaptic neuron. It causes hyperpolarization of the po postsynaptic synaptic neuron. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so it prevents uh, the pain transmission to higher center. It also has, uh, it also uh, inhibits the uh, serotonin neuroadrenaline as well as serotonin transporter. Uh, thus, it uh, increases intrasynaptic concentration of the scene. Thus, it uh, activates the uh, descending pain pathway. So, this is the um, opioid, uh, sorry, the tramadol uh, mechanism of action which we have known uh, till now. So, is there any other mechanism? Is there any a scope of any other mechanism? Yes, for that, uh, we should be uh, taking, uh, we should be viewing pain from another angle of uh, you. So till now, uh, we have been explaining pain as a static uh, component, as a static symptom, and it is mainly uh, explained by the neuronal cells, but upcoming studies have shown that there are non-neural components also. So uh, the neuronal components uh, like mu opioid, 5-HT, and norepinephrine, which we have explained now, now we'll be looking onto the other neuronal components under a voltage-heated sodium channel, NMDA receptors, adenosine uh, receptors, alpha adrenergic receptors, and under non-neuronal, under cytokines, PGE2, nuclear factor kappa B, and activated glial cells. So uh, how does the neuronal cells uh, have a mechanism of action uh, in tramadol? So the voltage-gated sodium channel, it blocks the transduction and transmission of pain impulses, and uh, it also inhibits ectopic impulses from synthesized neurons. These voltage-gated sodium channel they are present in the peripheral sensory nerves and uh, when they are inhibited, it will give uh, produce a local anesthetic and membrane stabilizing property. And in fact, the studies have showed intradermal injection uh, of tramadol causes a loss of pain, test and sensational pain. And NFDA, which is a glutamate receptor, has an important role in nociception and neuroplastic changes. Tramadol and M1 causes a dose-dependent non-competitive inhibition of NMDA, uh, NMDA, both in in vitro as well as in in vivo studies. And adenosine, which is uh, uh, distributed through the entire pain pathway at the level of peripheral, uh, at the at periphery level, uh, it, uh, the activation of A1 receptors by tramadol causes a decreased nociceptive signaling. And uh, this could possibly explain the role of inflammatory and neuropathic pain of tramadol. And uh, the alpha 2 adrenergic receptors, uh, it stimulates the anti nociceptive action via decreasing the neurotransmitter release, hyperpolarizing the dorsal horn neurons, and decreasing the sympathetic outflow at uh, spinal cord. And uh, this brings us to the uh, non neuronal targets. Uh, uh, so, uh, different pre preclinical pain models and uh, neuropathic pain has demonstrated that uh, pain is associated with an increased amount of pro inflammatory cytokines like IL 1, beta, and TNF and the decreased anti-inflammatory cytokines like IL-10. So this has been evidenced in a number of carpet, uh, studies in carpal tunnel syndrome and uh, herniated intervertebral risk. And the prostaglandin E2, we know it is a well-known major of central and peripheral hyperalgesia. And the anti-inflammatory effect of tramadol is also associated with a decreased PGE2. And coming on to nuclear factor kappa B, 
and a kappa b causes uh, an upregulation of cox2 and a glial cell activation following a nerve cell injury uh, so tramadol is also associated with an inhibition and decreased expression and activation of end of kappa b and the glial cells they directly uh, tramadol directly inhibit uh, the activation of central glial cell and it was found that long term administration of tramadol causes a depression of the glial cell activation and cytokine release so this is a, uh, this is found to be a contributing uh, factor in uh, man the management of neuropathic pain in tramadol so uh, this table summarizes the uh, the new and old uh, molecular targets and its effect uh, of on tramadol uh, so as we can see the uh, tramadol is a new opioid receptor agonist activity so it's stimulated and uh, it uh, inhibits the norepinephrine and serotonin and transporters in the central and uh, it also causes inhibition of the voltage gated sodium channel and nmda receptors and uh, it stimulates the adenosine a1 receptors and alpha 2 adrenergic receptors and uh, it also inhibits the release and even the activation of uh, cytokines prostaglandin e2 nucleic factor kappa b and activated uh, glial cells so uh, having seen uh, the new and old mechanism of action so now we'll be dealing with dosing regimen uh so in case of acute post operative pain according to the cdc 2060 uh, tramadol is advised to give uh, from 3 days but not more than 7 days and and uh, we have also slow titration so the by the word slow titration it means uh, around by 16 days uh it is advised to start uh, with an initial dose of 25 mg orally once a day and titrate in 25 mg increments every 3 days so as to reach a dose of 25 mg four times a day and the maximum dose is 400 mg per day and uh, in elderly people more than 75 years it is uh, the maximum recommended dose is less that is 300 mg so uh, in case of uh, organ impairment that is mainly kidney function it is guided by creatinine clearance creatinine clearance more than 30 ml per minute there is uh, no need of any uh, dosage change in both uh, immediate release and extended release uh, but if the creatinine clearance is less than 30 ml per minute uh, it is better to avoid um, extended release because there is always a chance for them to accumulate and cause adverse effect and uh, the uh, dosing interval of immediate release is advised to be extended to every 12 hours the maximum recommended dose is also decreased from 400 to 200 mg per day and if the patient is undergoing hemodialysis uh, again it is advisable to avoid the extended release and uh, the immediate release have to be started in a lower initial dose and extended interval is advised again their maximum doses further decrease can be further decrease up to 100 mg per day and uh, in case of liver impairment uh, the child poo classification will be guiding us here uh, the child poo classification a and b there is no need of any dosage or uh, adjustment but uh, in case of child poo cl classification c it is better to avoid extended release and uh, uh, immediate release can be given in a dose of 50 mg every 12 hours uh so uh, next very important uh, slide is on drug interactions so here uh, although tramadol has a number of interaction with uh, so many drugs here we will be dealing with those drugs which uh, we can have uh, uh, interaction uh, in as a case of, as a palliative care physician so the first is ondansetron so we know ondansetron is a 5h3 receptor antagonist so and uh, tramadol causes an increase amount of 5ht so there is an opposing effect at serotonin receptor that is first point and second is uh, ondansetron also have a cytochrome p450 metabolism so the concomitant usage of both of these drugs uh, is found to uh, have decreased therapeutic efficiency of both the drugs so it is advisable not to give them together and uh, serotonergic med medications like uh, tricyclic antidepressants ssri snri antipsychotics mao inhibitors uh, all of them increases the intracellular concentration of serotonin leading to serotonin syndrome and the usage of cytochrome p2d6 inhibitors namely fluoxetin paroxetin quinidine and bupropion so it will causes a decrease amount of uh, metabolism via cy uh, p2d6 a decrease amount of m1 so a uh, decrease amount of therapeutic effect will be there and if the patient is uh, dependent he or me uh, he or she may have even opioid withdrawal symptoms and cytochrome p3a4 inhibitors namely macrolides uh, acetyl antifungals protease inhibitors so uh, it will cause an increased channelization through, through cytochrome p2d6 so there is increased amount of m1 so increased amount of side effects is expected uh, if we are if the uh, patient is taking cytochrome p3a4 inducers like fentanyl carbamazepine uh, phenytoin so they'll have increased channelization through cytochrome p3a4 uh, pathway <clears throat> so they will have decreased concentration of uh, m1 so they have decreased efficacy and uh, 
decreased analgesia will be attained and if the patient is dependent on the drug, again, withdrawal symptoms can be uh, seen. And uh, concomitant use of anticholinergics, it will exacerbate the adverse effect of uh, new opioid agonist. That is, uh, the patient can have constipation and urinary retention. Mm, yeah, coming on to the indications of tramadol. So we will be discussing uh, mainly under three categories. Acute pain, mainly uh, for trauma, post-operative pain, and for procedural pain. And uh, for chronic pain, as we know, uh, tramadol uh, plays a very important role in cancer pain and in non-cancer pain and an emerging uh, uses uh, for opioid use uh, disorder. So uh, here we have a meta-analysis and a randomized control trials uh, of uh, using uh, tramadol uh, in case of uh, chronic non-specific low back pain. So uh, they found that uh, tramadol showed no significant effect on pain relief. And uh, we also had another Cochrane review in 2013. Uh, it found that tramadol was found to be better than placebo. Uh, but the evidence was of low quality. So we have a, a controversial role of uh, tramadol in uh, non-specific low back pain. And uh, there is another uh, Cochrane review, uh, which compared uh, tramadol alone in combination with uh, acetaminophen. And no important benefit in pain or in function uh, in people with osteoarthritis. And uh, we have another uh, systematic review in fi fibromyalgia uh, published in the year 2020. So they found that there is a, uh, a death of clinical trials on uh, the same particular topic. Uh, but tramadol is, has shown some positive effects, but the evidence is not, support, uh, is not sufficient to support or refute the use of tramadol uh, in fibromyalgia. And uh, we have another Cochrane review, uh, which mainly showed... Uh, investigate their role of tramadol for neuropathic pain in adults and they found uh, they have low quality evidence and there is no enough data uh, of adequate quality to provide convincing evidence that tramadol is in fact effective uh, but uh, a few people might get uh, a good response with tramadol so uh, and here we have an interesting study uh, in a Cochrane review uh, in the role of tramadol with or without paracetamol for cancer pain this was published in the year 2017 and they found that uh, they have very low uh, quality of evidence that uh, the pain, uh, tramadol uh, in fact provides pain relief in some adults and uh, the place of tramadol in managing cancer pain is still unclear. So this might explain uh, the inability of tramadol to find uh, its own place in the WHO list of essential opioids and uh, there is a no clear evidence to support the use of tramadol in mild, moderate or even severe pain. And uh, we don't have any information for the use of tramadol in pediatric population. And uh, uh, we have another meta-analysis of a single dose of uh, oral tramadol plus acetaminophen uh, in acute post-operative pain. Uh, this meta-analysis uh, confirmed the analytic superiority of the combination without any additional toxicity. And the adverse effects were in fact similar in the, in the uh, combination. And uh, the, tramadol, the, uh, the role of tramadol as a local anesthetic, um, uh, this was found uh, in the year 2021 and uh, it was found to have low prevalence uh, of adverse effects. And this is an ongoing project uh, published uh, in the year 2020. The purpose was to evaluate the use and effectiveness of the local administration of tramadol in reducing the post-operative pain, mainly during the surgical interventions. Uh, so we have seen uh, the upcoming evidence and the already proven evidence uh, in the use of tramadol. So now we'll be seeing what is the latest recommendation uh, of tramadol in the international community. So the uh, US uh, Food and Drug Administration uh, let out uh, this particular recommendation in 2017. They contraindicated the, in the use of uh, tramadol in children younger than 12 years and uh, to be used in children less than 18 years after uh, for pain, after tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. And they strongly warned against the use of uh, tramadol in adolescents between 12 and 18 years who are mainly more sensitive to the action, central action of tramadol, uh, particularly those are obese or who have conditions which may increase the risk of serious breathing problems like OSA and severe lung disease. They also prevented uh, breastfeeding mothers from using it because of serious adverse reactions in breastfed events. So what is the uh, cause for this? So uh, the FDA adverse event uh, reporting system found that there were nine cases of respiratory depression, including three deaths in children less than 18 years of age. And the pharmacovigilance database also found that there were 15 cases of respiratory depression, including one newborn, two infants. Other than that, there are 14 suspected deaths uh, because of uh, tramadol. So this is a case report uh, published in 2015. 
we show that uh, severe uh, a case of uh, respiratory depression in a child with OSA, this child was found to be an ultra rapid uh, metabolizer of CYP226. Um, and this is the upcoming use of tramadol in opioid use disorder. So usually we used to, uh, uh, used to use uh, the methadone and uh, buprenorphine for opioid use disorder along with the cl clonidin. But it is found that it has superior effect than clonidin and it is equally efficacious as buprenorphine and methadone. And uh, here we'll be seeing the adverse effects of tramadol. Uh, so we can see uh, tramadol, more than 10% of people uh, express nausea and dizziness. One to 10% show drowsiness, fatigue, headache, and 0.1 to 1% show diarrhea and mainly cardiovascular dysregulations. And 0.01 to 1.1% shows respiratory depression, epileptiform convulsions, trem tremors, bradycardia, and uh, even hallucination. So uh, this brings us to the most common adverse effect, which is uh, vomiting. Uh, so uh, we all know that tramadol is a weak opioid. So it should be showing uh, vomiting because of uh, opioid-induced vomiting. Uh, but it is a weak opioid. So why should it be giving uh, this frequent episodes of MSS? Uh, so this particular study showed a possible uh, mechanism for that. Mm, when tramadol is given in high uh, during rapid titration, so it will cause a 5-HT3 uh, transported uh, inhibition. So there is an increased amount of uh, serotonin. And this might act on its receptor, uh, causing an emetogenic effect. Uh, so we can, in fact, use ondansetron in this particular situation. So it also found that other than uh, the new opioid uh, receptor uh, uh, supported emesis, that is uh, in C is, uh, CT acid, ondansetron 5 hc receptor can also uh, be explained as a cause of uh, emesis in tramadol. And uh, this brings us to the toxicity. So, uh, tramadol intoxication syndrome is manifested by CNS depression, uh, including coma, nausea, and vomiting, tachycardia, CV collapse, seizures, and respiratory depression, uh, in fact, up to respiratory arrest. And withdrawal syndrome, it is mainly shown within 24 hours of abrupt discontinuation, and it can be explained by autonomic hyperexcitability in the absence of uh, any opioid agonist uh, suppression. And it is mainly uh, found in those who have history of abuse or who have been using tramadol for longer and high, in higher doses. And serotonin syndrome, and uh, it is mainly manifested by clonus, hyperreflexia, hyperthermia, and agitation. And it is uh, mainly explained by the increased intrasynaptic concentration of serotonin. And it is mainly seen after uh, concurrent use of serotonergic medication like TCA, uh, SSRI, SSRI, SNRI, and also with cytochrome P2D6 and P3A4 inhibitors. And uh, seizures, and it is found that the seizures is dose dependent, and there had been mainly single episodes of GPCS lasting for less than five minutes. And it is mainly found uh, when they are used with uh, along with SSRI, SRI, and TCAs, and if the patient is having history of seizures, and mainly in those who have at risk of seizures, like increased amount of intracranial tension. So uh, this particular study. Uh, a systematic review uh, published in 2019 uh, shows uh, the, uh, uh, the occurrence of tramadol and seizures. And uh, here we have we can see in case of tramadol poisoning, it is as say 38%. And among tramadol abusers, uh, the con uh, percentage of uh, seizures is 37 And in therapeutic usage, uh, it is less as 3%. And this uh, meta-analysis found that uh, the occurrence of seizures are dose-dependent and is mainly related to the male gender, but it's not related to naloxone administration. And uh, as most of this evidence were derived from cross-sectional uh, designs, the association of tramadol with seizures uh, could not be definitively uh, established. Uh, so this brings us to the uh, dependence and abuse. So traditionally it was uh, considered, tramadol was considered to be a substance of less abuse potential and dependence. And, but since the last two decades, there has been multiple studies, mainly case series and reports. The largest is from uh, Sweden, around one, uh, 104 patients were there, the majority were women on physical dependence. Um, so the physical dependence is marked by restlessness, lacrimation, and rhinorrhea. And it is mainly associated with history of, uh, mainly found in people who have a uh, history of drug abuse, and uh, interestingly, in medical staff, uh, than in pain patients. And it is mainly used, uh, found uh, when it is used uh, daily for an extended period of time. And abuse, dependence, and overdose of tramadol have become a serious public health concerns, mainly in some African countries and parts of Western Asia. And all this can be traced back uh, from our country. And this could explain the possible inclusion of tramadol under NDPS uh, in 2018. And uh, so this chart uh, shows the uh, 
uh, the adverse drug uh, reactions of tramadol mainly in people with drug abuse and dependence. So we can see they have mainly shown suicide, death and uh, seizures. So uh, this is uh, an important case series from India. Uh, it is mainly from uh, a department of psychiatry from uh, PGIML Chandigarh. There has been seven cases uh, of uh, tramadol dependence and out of this seven cases, three uh, were uh, uh, three uh, cases where after uh, uh, opioids, I mean, tramadol was started uh, for opioid uh, use disorder. Some started using it uh, for headache and body pains. Um, and this is uh, this is the uh, Gazette publication uh, of uh, of India in 2018, which included tramadol under NDPS Act of 1985. So uh, the implication is that if a, if a if a person is uh, having more than 250 grams, which is a commercial quantity of uh, tramadol, he or she uh, can face uh, uh, punishment up to 10 and 20 years uh, with the fine. Uh, so that brings us uh, to an end of uh, tramadol. Now, uh, starting on to its uh, important uh, congener, that is uh, codeine. So uh, similar to tramadol, we'll be dealing with codeine under the following outlines, head headings, uh, namely introduction, a uh, little bit about general pharmacology, uh, their dosing regimen, drug interactions, their indication, adverse effects, toxicity, and finally on dependence uh, and abuse. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, codeine is uh, three methyl morphine. It was mainly discovered in 1832 uh, by Pierre E. Jean Robicu. Uh, it is a naturally occurring low efficacy opium alco alkaloid, and it is mainly pre uh, prepared for medicine use by methylation of, of morphine to give a white crystalline powder. So coming on to pharmacokinetics, uh, it has a very good oral absorption and the bioavailability is up to 50%. Peak plasma concentration is achieved within one hour of administration and uh, half-life is around three to three and a half hours. Uh, the volume of distribution is around 3.6 liter per kilogram and the protein, plasma protein mining capacity is up to 25% and the clearance is achieved uh, by 0.85 liter uh, per minute. This brings us uh, to the metabolism and elimination. Uh, so codeine, the 80, up to 80% is uh, glucuronated and is removed to feces uh, via Gordon 6 glucuronide, which doesn't have any analgesic activity. And 30% uh, is equally divided uh, uh, by cytochrome P450 enzymes. Uh, cytochrome P2D6 uh, yields this o, o demethylated form of uh, codeine, which will be further uh, giving us morphine. And uh, that will be explaining the analgesic properties of uh, codeine. And the cytochrome P3A4 uh, undergoes uh, uh, do, does the metabolism of the rest 15%. And it will uh, give us N demethylated codeine, which will be further given to norcodeine, which doesn't have any analgesic property. And the rest 10% will be excreted uh, through urine. Uh, so this brings us to uh, pharmacodynamics. Uh, so uh, the main uh, analgesic effect of uh, codeine. Uh, can be explained by the mu opioid receptor agonist activity and it is of 1, 6 that of morphine and it is mainly uh, uh, because of the CYP2D activity. So uh, like that of tramadol, they can have ultra poor and normal metabol metabolizers uh, and uh, tramadol also have an important anti tussive action. Uh, this is by suppression of the cuff reflex through a direct effect on the cuff center in the medulla but we have very limited evidence to support the efficacy of codeine than placebo. And it also causes uh, peripheral vasodilatation uh, and leading to hypotension. It is also have seen as depressive, uh, depressive effect and uh, on intestinal uh, motility also. So coming on to dosing, uh, when uh, orally administered, uh, the immediate release tablet can be given from 15 to 60 milligram every four hourly and maximum total daily dose of 360 milligram per day. And it is interesting to note that um, uh, codeine has a ceiling effect. And the controlled release tablet can be given 50 milligram every 12 hourly in case of opioid patient. And in case of uh, for added action, 30 to 60 milligram per day can be given in divided doses. And if the uh, patient is having a renal impairment, uh, then it warrants a dosage reduction, particularly if GFR is less than 50 ml per minute. Uh, now coming on to the drug interaction, uh, as we uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Codeine has a CNS depressant action. So when it is used along with other depressants like barbiturates, alcohol, and sedative, it will uh, have exaggerated uh, CNS depressive effects. And because of the peripheral vasodilatation, when it is given along with antihypertensive, it can uh, lead to uh, orthostatic hypotension and in fact, uh, syncope also. And uh, like uh, 
tramadol when it is given along with an anticholinergic it will exacerbate uh, uh, the uh, side effects of uh, opioids per se leading to constipation and urinary retention and um, when it is used with metoclopramide, it will oppose, uh, antagonize the action of uh, metoclopramide, the proxenetic action of the metoclopramide uh, on ga gastrointestinal mortality. And uh, CYP2D6 inhibitors like quinidine, phenethylamines, and antipsychotics, when they are used, it will interface the metabolism of codeine and uh, there will be decreased amount of morphine production, that, so leading to a decreased uh, analytic efficacy. So coming on to the indications. So uh, tramadol uh, is in fact, uh, contributes to step, step two of the WHO ladder for pain. And it is recognized in chronic cancer pain, but the use in chronic non-cancer pain is uh, controversial. Uh, coming into the anti tessive action, it was initially considered as a gold standard for uh, suppressant. But uh, the recent ev available evidence uh, is not supporting uh, the same. And uh, opioid uh, replacement, uh, the dihydrocodine, which is uh, a point of the preparation of codeine, is mainly used for detoxification and maintenance. Uh, but the Cochrane Review in 2020 uh, doesn't uh, uh, suppose the same. And uh, for persistent diarrhea, codeine and loperamide is found to be equally effective, but caution has to be uh, taken because of the addictive potential of codeine. And uh, in case of restless uh, leg syndrome, we can in fact uh, use codeine uh, if the other conventional uh, drugs has failed. Uh, um, it is mainly advised to take uh, one in a daytime or at uh, once a night time. And uh, coming on to the adverse effects, the most common adverse effect of codeine is constipation and it doesn't uh, achieve a tolerance. Uh, so this warrants the uh, administration of stool softness if codeine is, uh, is administered. And uh, the second important is uh, nausea and vomiting. And it is expected to get relieved after a few days to weeks of continued exposure. And uh, cloud alimentation and sed or sedation uh, is also uh, found in some cases. So uh, Precaution has to be taken to those who uh, are at work or those who require uh, uh, um, driving for long periods of time. And because of its action in the endocrine system, hypogonadism can also occur with uh, chronic use and urinary retention, hypersensitivity, blurred vision, bronchospasm, weakness, and abdominal cramps uh, can also be seen in some cases. Uh, coming on to the toxicity, toxicity features mainly found in accidental overdose cases. And it is manifested by confusion, somnolescence, shallow breathing, and constricted pupil. Uh, coming on to the recommendation, so similar to tramadol, USFDA has uh, issued uh, this particular uh, recommendation in 2017. Uh, they have contraindicated the use of codeine for cough and pain in children less than 12 years and to use uh, for treating pain in less than 18 years uh, post tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy. Uh, they have also used uh, recommended again using codeine in adolescents. Uh, between 12 to 18 years and uh, they have also issued a strengthened warning to mothers that breastfeeding is not recommended for those taking codeine and uh, in fact the in infants can manifest excess sleepiness difficulty in breastfeeding or even serious breathing difficulty mm. so this is the guidelines and recommendation uh, like uh, by cpic and uh, dpwg and uh, as we have told uh, as we have seen in the metabolism cvr p2d6 uh, yields uh, uh, the old methylated form, which will give us uh, morphine. And here, if the patient is an ultra rapid metabolizer, there will be increased amount of morphine. So, the increased enzymatic activity, more amount of morphine, which means more toxicity. So, we should be using other alternatives for pain management like morphine and oxycodone. Uh, but uh, if you don't want to use another alternative, we can in fact uh, give them lesser doses, like less than 20 milligram in adults. Uh, for cuff, we can also use other alternatives like noscapine. And for uh, we can also start at lower doses, less than 20 milligram in adults. And in cases in case of intermediate metabolizer, uh, that is their, inter, in their enzymatic activity will be intermediate. So it will be reduced amount of morphine. So we can use uh, alternative uh, medicines. And if there is no, uh, if dose increase is not working. And in case of poor metabolizer, so their enzymatic activity will be very less. So the, the amount of morphine produced will vary less. So their therapeutic efficiency will be again less. So we should be thinking about alternative. In case of, uh, for antitussive action, in both intermediate metabolizers, uh, we don't uh, uh, prescribe any uh, particular action as such. And it is uh, interesting to note that uh, the in Asian population, the ultra rapid metabolizers uh, is around 2%. So, uh, so these are, uh, here we have a case uh, study. This public was published in 1994. 
uh, it showed that at 181 and 395 addicts uh, were uh, found in states of uh, Assam and Nagaland and the EC, OTC availability, low expenditure and mild withdrawals and ease of conception without secrecy were some of the reasons which were found because uh, for this, explain this addiction. And uh, another in 1997, uh, this showed the abuse of potent containing cup syrups and mainly uh, it was initiated through friends for curiosity and in patients and, uh, and a number of uh, HIV related risk behavior and psychiatric comorbidity were found. Uh, and the reasons were found to be the low price EC availability and the peer preparation of uh, codeine containing cough syrup. So uh, in this picture, we can see uh, the opioid consumption in Asia over three years. The tramadol plane and tramadol combo can be seen as uh, that occupying the maximum amount. And this can be roughly correlating with the increasing amount of drug related cases uh, in our country in the past few years. This warrant a need for uh, a prevention, a conscious effort from our side as primary care physician uh, in, uh, in some cases. So we should be looking into pharmacovigilance. Uh, we should be asking them to get uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, empty, uh, uh, the empty packets. We should be look, asking them to have the previous pres prescription. We be, should be following, as, uh, following uh, these people. And uh, in fact, in the USA, they have used uh, social media for pharmacovigilance. Uh, we can also cause, uh, we can also uh, do a responsible prescription. Uh, we can also use uh, screening tools like opioid risk tool, ORT. And uh, we should be also screening them for pseudo addiction. So pseudo addiction is in fact inadequate pain relief. Uh, the patient will be asking more about uh, opioid drugs uh, further prescriptions and all. This uh, doesn't always mean the patient is addicted. We should be uh, further assessing them and we should be properly treating them. And a co-prescription with benzodiazepines and other drugs can also cause possible interaction. We should be also looking on them. And uh, vulnerable patients, particularly those with history of drug abuse, uh, should be particularly monitored. Uh, these all are the uh, few uh, steps which we can use to prevent misuse and dependence. Uh, so coming on to the uh, uh, take-home message. So... Uh, Although widely used uh, in clinical practice, literature reveals uh, the low quality evidence of tramadol and cancer pain. And the emerging studies show neuronal and non-neuronal cell targets, uh, which contribute to the broad spectrum activity of tramadol. Uh, CYP2 risk guided care can in fact play an important role in tramadol and codeine based management. And initially thought as a drug uh, with low abuse potential, upcoming evidence suggests that it's a widespread dependence. So this warrants uh, a mindful prescription from our side. So this is a supplemental material for the evidence of pharmacogenomics and terminal and codeine. Uh, thank you, everyone. Bohot badiyas, Alice. It was so good. So many evidence you have shown. So Prashant, you want to add something, and then we will have take the question answer one by one. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, just uh, uh, one thing. Ma'am, we all are using uh, tramadol in our uh, clinical practice, but uh, many of the patients uh, do not get pain relief uh, from tramadol. So, and we don't have much options uh, for moderate pain also. So, when we are starting a patient on tramadol, we have to assess the patient uh, often. And if there is uh, no pain relief, we uh, should shift to other uh, medication like stronger opioids, morphine, fentanyl. And uh, regarding codeine, when, uh, you know, I don't have any personal experience of use it uh, in pain. If anybody have uh, uh, their experience can uh, share. And uh, the questions in the chat box, ma'am, I can uh, answer. Okay. Oh, by one by one, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, first question is, uh, uh, desmethyl tramadol ever used as an independent parent drug? Ma'am, uh, it um, uh, recent, uh, there are some studies, recent studies, one study uh, is in 2019, uh, the authors have used uh, desmethyl uh, tramadol uh, for the analgesic purpose and they found promising results. And uh, also, uh, regard, uh, this drug uh, used as abuse in Sweden, which caused nine accidental uh, deaths. Uh, it was sold the, under the name of Krypton. And uh, second question is, 
since tramadol also produces analgesia through serotonergic pathway on densetron might re reduce its analgesia we use metaclopramide instead and find it effective yes it is very true and uh, uh, on densetron is only used in this in the condition when a rapid titration or injection of tramadol is done because uh, tramadol inhibits the 5st transporter which increase the uh, uh, synaptic serotonin concentration uh, rapidly so in that particular condition when uh, undensetron is used while if the uh, tramadol is slowly titrated and uh, we should use metaclopramide instead uh, is pharmacogenomics done in any case uh, it it is a uh, I, I don't think we are doing it but uh, this uh, the indian study uh, showed showed that we uh, in India, 79% are uh, normal metabolizers. Is simultaneous use of buprenorphine or fentanyl contraindicated in uh, severe pain? So, uh, as such, uh, two opioids cannot be combined, but uh, we are not using uh, buprenorphine in our study, but, uh, but two opioids should not be uh, combined uh, in any, any case. And uh, ma'am, all questions are uh, answered, ma'am. So there are there are few comments. Uh, so all the comments says that uh, it was an excellent presentation. Uh, and then uh, Doctor uh, Devsina says that lot of information in short time. Uh, so I, I think this is absolutely a right comment uh, the, by Devsina. I, I want that she should unmute her mic and uh, speak that uh, what exactly what exactly the new information she got from this lecture. Uh, yes, Doctor, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so, uh, so as I have mentioned this slide, ma'am. Uh, no, 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 no. Doctor Dev, let Doctor Dev and I speak because she has given this comment that lot of new information in a short time. Okay. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Shurma and Dr. Devasena here. And uh, I found uh, Alice covered a lot of information, uh, not new information, a lot of information in short time. That's what I tend to say. So this was, it was true that it was a lot of information. And Alice, I want to know from you that uh, you were using tramadol since last so many years for uh, uh, for pain management, but what exactly take home message for as a resident you have found after uh, after preparing this lecture? Uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, yes, I, it's true, ma'am. I have been using tramadol for, for the past three years, uh, but after after preparing preparing for this presentation, and it was alarming to know that they, we do, doesn't have much uh, quality evidence which support. Uh, the use of tramadol in uh, cancer pain and uh, the newer mechanism of action which uh, could support the use of tramadol with uh, comorbidities like anxiety, depression because of its uh, similar mechanism of action like SSRI and SNRI was interesting and uh, the rising cases of uh, tramadol abuse uh, potential uh, also gave uh, you know the importance of mindful prescription particularly also the uh, although the potential of uh, potential liability among pain patients is less. We should be always keeping that particular point in our mind. And also uh, the uh, possible mechanism of emesis because of pondansetron in rapid titration, although we don't do rapid titration uh, in our setting, uh, that is also an interesting uh, piece of information. As a teacher, what extra you would like to uh, summarize that uh, you have learned when you were moderating this seminar with Alice? Because I know you, both of you have worked really hard for this lecture. So what extra information as a teacher you would like to give to residents? Uh, Ma'am, uh, just one information I want to give. We are using tramadol uh, in our daily practice and um, um, many patients come that uh, they are not, not getting pain relief. And we still, uh, sometimes we uh, are continuing them on uh, tramadol. So 
uh, as as we seen the evidence that uh, it have low quality evidence in uh, many pains so it will not work uh, so we have to shift uh, if, we have, if we have to give uh, pain relief to these patients then we have to uh, give give them stronger uh, medications and uh, uh, but we have to assess pain more frequently this uh, this uh, thing i want to tell so absolutely right i think uh, now we will uh, finish in time and first of all you have finished in time second all second thing you have addressed all the questions and third thing which you have by evidence with all sorts of evidence from right from the beginning to the till 2021 you have proven that using tramadol for cancer pain management it should be very very judiciously because it has not lot of analgesic potential Second thing you have said that it has no in meta-analysis and in Cochrane review, you have proven, you have said that it has no effect in low backache. So unnecessary giving tramadol can create other side of this thing, which is we are responsible that we have to use it. We have to balance use versus misuse. So if we will not be knowing this pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, we will be using, continue, we will continue to use tramadol and we will create lot of opioid induced disorder abuse and overuse unnecessarily especially in non cancer pain like low backache and also in cancer pain so what exactly we should do we should rather than continuing using tramadol and prashant has twice said that many of our patients after using tramadol uh, to the highest doses they come back and they say that there is no pain relief so we should be using low dose of oh, morphine rather than continue or fentanyl we should be using uh, these medication and we will discuss these medication in the next uh, next lex next lecture so thank you very much prashant and alice for wonderful lecture and uh, uh, dr shobha wants to say something shobha you want to add something you i can see your comments dr shobha is head of uh, palliative medicine at uh, amrita institute of uh, cochin and she has got a lot of a lot of uh, knowledge about the medication. Shobha, would you like to add? Uh, hello, thanks, Sushma, and uh, it's a very good presentation. Uh, I think they've covered uh, all the metabolism and things like that to the extent what is required. So uh, I would say, uh, Bibrin often, as you know, a lot of people use it, especially the orthopedic department. Uh, they put the patient on Bibrin often, and they don't get pain relief, and they call us um, for. Uh, pain relief. So sometimes we are not aware that they have Vibranofen patch um, or they would have had um, from a previous uh, OPD uh, at, um, uh, in an OPD basis and they come and get admitted and that, it, that gets missed out on the drug chart. So uh, sometimes we find it um, just like that on the patient's body and then, then we try and find out what it is. So buprenorphine basically um, has an agonistic and antagonistic activity. So anything which you give which is a pure agonist, uh, buprenorphine can uh, counteract and produce less analgesia in, um, in, in such patients, especially patients on morphine. So buprenorphine can be used, definitely. And you can give morphine or fentanyl as an SOS dose and find out what is the dose of buprenorphine that is needed. And you can titrate it up and stick the next uh, uh, lot of buprenorphine. That, that is no harm. But we don't need to combine both since there's no evidence for it. So this is a usual practice in other countries as well, where they put the patient on buprenorphine patch and they titrate the dose up of buprenorphine with morphine as breakthrough. But we also should remember that we have buprenorphine sublingual tablets or we have tablets which can be used as sublingual, which is 0 0.2 milligrams under the tongue. And this can also be used for titration. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Sushma. Thank you, Shobha. Thank you very yeah. much. And we will be discussing buprenorphine separately in detail. But this was a good information and a relevant information here. Uh, so I just want to thank uh, Prashant, uh, Alice, thank you, for wonderful presentation. For giving it, I hope it is an eye opener for all the residents, those who are using tramadol left and right unnecessarily for long time. That it is of how uh, much judiciously they should be using in their day-to-day -day practice. So thank you very much. And thank you, Nisha and Archana. And thank you everyone for joining because your presence makes a huge difference and give a lot of uh, uh, 
a uh, lot of encouragement that these lectures are required and these lectures should continue and we will see you next week before 6:30 on monday thanks a lot thank you very much